The worst nightmare of China is coming to reality. On December 16th, Japan announced a new national security and military doctrine to modernize its military with $330 billion in spending. This is the first time since World War II that Japan has announced to build a modern military force armed to the teeth, capable of striking deep within China. This armament plan will make Japan the world's third largest military spender after the United States and China. While making this announcement, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said, Japan and its people are at a turning point in history. Until December 15th, Japan was not allowed to raise an army due to its post-World War II American-authored constitution. Japan had surrendered its right to wage war or raise an army. But now, Japan has decided to raise an army to achieve defense and preemptive strike capabilities. And this is giving the Chinese military sleepless nights. According to Chinese state media, China has sent a fully armed carrier strike force to the western Pacific near the Japanese mainland to deter Japan from breaking away from its defense-only military principle. This new class of carrier is the most powerful Lianning aircraft carrier group yet developed and deployed by the PLA. China sent this new carrier the same day Japan broke away from its defense-only post-war principle and announced plans to equip itself with first-attack-capable missiles, allowing itself to hit China. Tensions between China and Japan are rising to alarming levels not seen since World War II. In World War II, China suffered huge losses from Japanese invasion. The Japanese army scored major victories, capturing Beijing, Shanghai, and the Chinese capital of Nanking in 1937, which resulted in the infamous incident of the Rape of Nanking. But eventually, Japan lost the war and surrendered to the Allies in late 1945, ending the war in China. In this video, we will discuss what are the driving reasons behind this historical shift in Japan's policy to never wage aggressive war after World War II, and can Japan support this strategy as its economy continues to shrink due to global recession and an aging population? First, let's discuss reasons for the shift in military doctrine of Japan. Former Japanese American Maritime Self-Defense Force Admiral Yoji Koda said, The strategic challenge posed by China is the biggest Japan has ever faced. Japan wants to buy interceptor missiles for ballistic missile defense, attack and reconnaissance drones, satellite communications equipment, Lockheed Martin F-35 stealth fighters, helicopters, submarines, warships, and heavy lift transport jets. The shift is the result of Tokyo's fears about China's growing military strength and regional posturing, as well as threats ranging from North Korean missile launches to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. China is undertaking a sweeping military modernization program and increasing maritime pressure on Japan in the East China Sea, with a near constant presence of China Coast Guard vessels and waters around the Senkaku Islands. Its military exercises around Taiwan in August, which included ballistic missile launches that landed in Japan's exclusive economic zone, underscored that a conflict in the Taiwan Strait would directly impact Japanese security. North Korea continues to advance nuclear weapons and missile programs, and in October, launched an intermediate-range ballistic missile that overflew Japan. The Russian invasion of Ukraine, in particular, has been an accelerant of change. Japanese officials watched as NATO's support for Kiev increased after it demonstrated a will to fight in the face of impossible odds. We have just finished an extraordinary uh, summit uh, of NATO leaders to address uh, the biggest threat uh, to our security in a generation, President Putin's war against uh, Ukraine. The people of Ukraine are resisting with uh, courage and determination, fighting for their freedom and for their future. We stand with them. They concluded that by ensuring the capacity to better defend Japan, the United States and other partners would be more likely to come to their aid in a crisis. The Japanese public appears to agree, and there's strong popular support for plans to increase the defense budget and to acquire strike capability. Japan fears an attack from China on its Senkaku Islands. The Senkaku Islands dispute is a territorial dispute over a group of uninhabited islands near Taiwan. Both China and Japan claim these islands as their sovereign territory. Japan argues that it surveyed the islands in the late 19th century and found them to be terra nullius land, belonging to no one. 
While China argues that documentary evidence prior to the First Sino-Japanese War indicates Chinese possession, and that the territory is accordingly a Japanese seizure that should be returned as the rest of Imperial Japan's conquests were returned in 1945. On the 23rd of November 2013, China set up the East China Sea Air Defense Identification Zone, which includes the Senkaku Islands, and announced that it would require all aircraft entering the zone to file a flight plan and submit radio frequency or transponder information. Top U.S. government officials have declared in 2004, 2010, and September of 2012 that as Japan maintains effective administrative control on the islands, the islands fall under the 1960 Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security between the United States and Japan, which requires the U.S. to assist Japan in defending the islands if anyone, including China, attacks or attempts to occupy or control them. China has unilaterally decided to implement an air defense identification zone around the islands and the broader region in order to, quote, guard against potential air threats, according to the defense ministry. Japan reacted to this event by calling the move very dangerous. China then sent air force jets, including fighter planes, to carry out a patrol mission. However, the U.S. does not recognize Chinese claims, declaring the area international waters and airspace. The United States flew two B-52 bomber aircrafts through the zone without incident. Now, let's discuss, can the Japanese economy support this military expansion plan? Well, things are not looking good for the Japanese economy. Japan's economy unexpectedly shrank for the first time in a year in the third quarter, Stoking further uncertainty about the outlook as global recession risks, a weak yen, and higher import costs take a toll on household consumption and businesses. The world's third largest economy has struggled to motor on despite the recent lifting of COVID curbs, and has faced intensifying pressure from red-hot global inflation, sweeping interest rate increases worldwide, and the Ukraine war. Gross domestic product fell an annualized 1.2% in July through September. Now, on top of being squeezed by a global slowdown and soaring inflation, Japan has been dealing with the challenge of the yen slide to 32-year lows against the dollar, which has magnified cost of living strains by further lifting the price of everything from fuel to food items. In the middle of global inflation, the Japanese yen has been weakening throughout the year. At the beginning of 2021, the yen was 104 to the US dollar. In March of 2022, the yen was 115 to the dollar, and the depreciation continued down to 130 against the dollar in April. The yen is now depreciated below 150 to the dollar, reaching a new 32-year low. The yen's prolonged depreciation affected the lifestyle of Japanese people both inside and outside of the country. Japanese diplomats have been concerned about the influence of the weak yen on their savings and living standards abroad. As one Japanese diplomat said, quote, The prices here just keep going up. If the weak yen continues, I'm worried it may affect my child's education and other costs. Apparently, a perfect storm of stagnation and global recession is approaching to the global economy. And Japan has been trapped in quantitative easing, as well as the Japan-US interest rate gap. At the same time, it needs to be aware that the global recession is likely to occur in a geopolitical power transition period, in the age of the China-United States rivalry in the Indo-Pacific. Japan's nominal gross domestic product per capita is expected to have already fallen below Taiwan's this year, and is projected to be smaller than South Korea's in 2023 according to a report this week by the Japan Center for Economic Research. The Institute previously forecast that it would take until at least 2027 before the two neighboring economies would outrun Japan on a per-person basis. Japan's trade deficit narrowed less than expected in November, even as commodity prices cooled, as the impact of the weaker yen continued to weigh on imports. The trade gap remained above 2 trillion yen, or $14.8 billion for a fourth consecutive month, the finance ministry figure showed on Thursday, with the 2.03 trillion yen deficit much larger than a shortfall of 1.68 trillion yen estimated by economists. Imports increased 30.3% from a year ago, compared with a 26.9% forecast, while exports gained 20%, 
largely in line with expectations. Inbound shipments were still led by crude oil and coal shipments, while exports were pushed up by cars, construction, and mining machinery. Japan's trade balance has now been in the red for 16 consecutive months, and the country is set to finish the year with a record annual trade deficit. It seems that Japan will face a lot of hurdles in getting the required funds to sustain a military capable of deterring China.